Remember when the internet was supposed to restart on December 31st, 1999? When all the computers of the world were going to blow up, but didn't when the clock struck midnight. It scared many of us the world over, including Africa, even though we were still in the early phases of mass technology adoption. In 2000, there was still little activity in the way of legislation, policy making, or infringements of digital rights and online freedoms, despite the internet coming into being in 1991. This can partly be attributed to the low spread of ICT in Africa at the time, during which the average internet penetration in the continent was 2%. For example, as of 2005, internet penetration rate in Senegal, Rwanda, Malawi, Ethiopia, DRC and Burundi was less than 1% and at 6.7% only Zimbabwe had penetration rates higher than 5%. The low digital activity between 1999 and 2005 means that there were hardly any cases of arrests or prosecutions of individuals over the use of ICT and even blocking of websites was uncommon. However, by 2005, some countries were beginning to realize the need to intercept communications, including digital communications. Ethiopia was probably the first sub-Saharan African country to begin blocking internet sites, with the first reports of blocked websites appearing in May 2006 when opposition blogs were unavailable. During this period, laws governing media and journalism were the main way to control freedom of expression, including of voices that questioned government actions. Between 2006 and 2010, there was a flurry of legislation to enable the interception of communication or to criminalize the use of certain services. Some countries, such as Kenya, moved to regulate the transmission of SMS, particularly bulk SMS, and the propagation of online hate speech at election time. This period also witnessed numerous cases of blockage of critical websites in countries such as Burundi and Uganda. The Arab Spring of December 2010 also served to fuel further restrictions to digital rights in many African countries. This period also saw the start of systemic disruption of communications and other internet freedom infringements, especially during election periods. The target was often websites critical of the state, as well as SMS services. Meanwhile, in 2007, DRC and Senegal introduced mandatory SIM card registration, and within a few years, the practice had spread all over the region. 2011 to 2015 period saw an increase in the measures which governments used to control internet activity and could be said to be when most governments instituted dedicated efforts to regulate and control citizens' online actions. More citizens were being arrested and prosecuted over alleged offences and crimes committed through online mediums. More governments ordered disruptions to communications. More laws were enacted to govern digital communications. Increase in dedicated effort to grow government surveillance capacity. From 2016, we entered the global era of network disruptions, commonly known as internet shutdowns. Nearly half of the countries in Africa have experienced a government-ordered network disruption, with popular social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter being the main target. These have also evolved to become targeted, with some regions being affected by disruptions, such as the Anglophone region of Cameroon being blocked off the internet in 2017, or the Tigray region being blocked off the internet in 2021. During this period, financial restrictions and regulations have also been introduced, which have only served to reduce affordability and access to the internet. Uganda's over-the-top tax, commonly known as the social media tax, through to Tanzania's online content regulations, which require content creators to part with almost 1,000 US dollars, are just some of the ways digital inclusion, freedom of expression, and access to information is being limited in some countries. More recently, 2020 established the age of COVID-19, a period of uncertainty and opportunity. Concerns about the legitimization of surveillance and interception of communication through to the further exclusion of communities in online spaces have come to shape this age. However, Parallel to this, 
there have been some positives, such as a surge in local content development and ultimately an increased appreciation and need of being part of the digital society. More work needs to be done for the future of a truly inclusive, affordable and accessible digital society for more people in Africa. Join our community of collaborators in advancing effective and inclusive ICT policy who are working towards this goal. Learn and understand more about the path that digital rights has taken in Africa since 1999 through to where we are today and most importantly, where we need to go. Visit our website regularly to see our carefully curated resources which will help you to do just this.